Hello again everybody and welcome back to the fourth video in this uh, OpenCV series where we're going to eventually build up in the next video to car counting. Um, but first we're going to, in this video, uh, part four, multiple object tracking and image subtraction, we're essentially going to take the previous three videos that we did and sort of conglomerate those topics together to more of a general object tracking. And then in the next video we're going to specifically tailor that to car counting. So uh, let's go ahead and get started up today, uh, get started today, so we're, we'll fire up Visual Studio and then we're going to go to to GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B, M-I-C-R-O, microcontrollers, and more, and take out the spaces. And I'm uh, going to link this in the description below as well. And then we're going to go to, let's see here, uh, repositories. And then um, OpenCV3, multiple object tracking by image subtraction CPP. And I should mention that um, please see the prerequisites. Um, for this video, if you have not already, I'll link them in the description below. But basically, the prerequisites are the installation, OpenCV installation uh, video, and then the first three parts of the series. So uh, next, we'll also take a look at what's in this repository here. And let me move this down just a little bit. Okay, so uh, presentation. Um, this is three slides that we'll take a look at momentarily. Um, but first, let's go ahead and implement the program. So to do that, this is going to look very similar to uh, the program from Part 2, Image Subtraction, as far as this directory organization here. But, of course, blob.h, blob.cpp, and main are going to do substantially more in this program. But it's still the same structure where we have a main program and then just uh, two more files, blob.h and blob.cpp, for our blob class. And then, of course, we have the readme, and then we have this video, which is simply a copy of... Uh, the video that ships with um, OpenCV in the samples directory. So uh, to build the project today, I'll simply be copying and pasting out of here. Uh, I'm going to put this in the other screen here so we can go to raw and just simply copy and paste out of here. So let's go ahead and do that and build up the project. So new project and we can name the project whatever we'd like. We might as well name it the same as the repository name. And make sure you choose Visual C++, Empty Project, choose your preferred location, and uncheck those. And then when it comes up, we're going to add blob.h, blob.cpp, and main. So here we are, add a new item, cpp file. So this will be main.cpp. And then we're going to add our two blob files. So add new item, so blob.cpp, and then we're going to add new item, and choose .h file, and then we're going to add blob.h, and now it's just a matter of copying and pasting in. So paste in blob.cpp first, and then we're going to paste in blob.h, and raw, and simply copying and pasting out of my other screen, going to raw first to make copying and pasting as easy as possible. And then we're going to go to main and copy and paste that in. And once we get this going, I'll kind of explain some basics of what this um, project is doing, and uh, we'll sort of go over the code. So uh, let's see here. We, there's one more item that we need to add, and that is to our project directory. We need to add this video file that I showed in the GitHub repository a moment ago, and it's also available in the OpenCV samples directory. Again, this is not my original content. This is um, directly from the OpenCV organization. And I'm simply reproducing it on my GitHub repository for convenience. So we're going to go ahead and copy that into the project directory. And then we'll go ahead and fire up the program and test it. But actually, first we need to put in our references to get rid of all these red underlines. So uh, x64. And then we're going to go to project uh, properties and Visual C++ directories, include directories, edit. And if you're at all unclear on uh, setting up OpenCV, please see the installation and configuration video. Uh, I'll link it in the description below. And I'm simply copying and pasting out of the cheat sheet uh, from that video in my other screen here. So library directories, edit and paste that in. And then we're going to add the library as well. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Linker, input, and additional dependencies. And edit, paste that in. Apply OK. And now we can go ahead and run it and see the results that we get. And of course I'm going to have to move these uh, windows around a little bit. So what we're going to have here is relatively similar to the previous program insofar as the, let's see, here's the command line, insofar as seeing the blobs move around. Uh, so here's our image thresh, and then here's our image contours, so that we're, there we're simply drawing the contours filled in. And then this is the convex holes, and you can see there's some dots around the screen in the convex holes because we haven't yet thrown out the convex holes that can't possibly be people due to size or aspect ratio or other similar criteria. So this here is the current frame blobs. 
and then this here is image blobs. And the difference between current frame blobs is this is the blobs that we've simply received in the current frame, whereas blobs is what we've managed to match to the previous frames. So let's take a look at blobs and then copy while the program's running here. So try and get both of these on the screen here at once. Okay, that looks pretty good. So the idea here is we're trying to actually track the people. So uh, as somebody moves, and again, this is a very, very difficult example to work with, but you can see this person is number three as they move across the screen. This person's number 26. This person's number 37. These two people, unfortunately, are conglomerated together to 40. This person's 43 until they pause for a moment, at which time they're lost. Then they're 49, and so on. So um, the challenge that we have here that we did not have in part two um, let me bring up the slide here. So what we did in part two with image subtraction is we simply got our blobs. What we're doing here in part four is we're attempting to track our blobs successively from one frame to the next. And uh, there's an awful lot um, in, out there in the literature on this. And as you saw when the program was running, we'll just go ahead and run it one more time so you can see. Um, the blob tracking here is far from perfect, but at least as far as a test bed or a sort of a general object tracking program, this works pretty well. And you could... Um, if you were interested in a particular purpose, you could study up on the literature more, and then starting with, with what we have here, you could implement a specific algorithm that may work substantially better for some purposes. Um, there's one particular paper that I found, and I'm going to pull this over to the other screen. Uh, this paper here, Discrete Continuous uh, Optimization for Multi-Target Tracking. And we'll go ahead and pull up the YouTube video for that. Um, this is a really well written and very interesting paper, and uh, in this work, what these guys are doing here, or guys and ladies, I should say, is really amazing at the end here. Steps. And let me turn the volume down just a bit, so you can see that they get incredibly good object tracking, and here they are working with the same video. So, uh, depending on what you do here, it's it's possible to implement algorithms to that do far, far better than the basic program we're looking at today. This would be an extremely high-end example of one that's incredibly well done. You can see the, the people are tracked individually exceptionally well. These two people that are together are <laughs> standing right next to each other and overlapping each other intermittently are still tracked well, uh, and so on. So um, definitely, I would start with this if you're interested in further reading. But um, just to take a look at the basic algorithm that we have today, and what we're going to find is that when we implement uh, car counting in the next video, we're going to find that it's sufficient. So um, the challenge really here is, and I made those slides that I mentioned earlier, suppose that we have three blobs moving around the screen. So let's say this is our first blob, this is our second blob, and this is our third blob. So we could use our prediction algorithm, which we did in the previous video, to calculate this uh, the dashed circle, which is intended to represent the uh, next predicted position. So let's say when we actually get the next frame, this is what we have. So how do we know what does this match to and what does this match to and what does this match to? Well, if we overlay them, we can see uh, that clearly, based on the distance, that this this uh, blob here we should match to these historically, and this one, because it's very close to this prediction, we should match to these historically as well. So that's basically the algorithm that we follow today. So let's go ahead and dive into the code, and we'll take a look at that. So here we declare some colors, and here's our function prototypes. And this part here is similar to the first part in the video series, where we're simply opening the video. And this part here is similar to the second part in the video series where we're doing uh, image subtraction. And then we, let's see, we show our contours here. We show our convex holes here. Here we screen out our blobs that don't meet a certain criteria. And then we show our current frame blobs. And here's where the program gets a little bit more interesting. So if we're going through the uh, first first frame, then we simply add all the blobs to our current list of blobs that have passed this test here. Where it gets more interesting is in the situation of those slides that I just mentioned ago. If you already have a number of blobs existing from previous frames, and then you get a current frame set of blobs, and you have to match those to the previous frame, you're going to need a function like this, match current frame blobs to existing blobs. And once those blobs are matched, at that point it's pretty straightforward again, then you simply uh, show what you have and do basically some bookkeeping for the next iteration. So let's take a look at match current frame blobs to existing blobs. So what we do in uh, in this uh, function here is first we're going to iterate through existing blobs and then we're going to set um, current match found or new blob by default we're going to 
say that that's false until we found a match and then we're going to call our prediction function which you recall from the second video in the series. So then at this point we have a nested for loop here. So in the outer for loop we're going to iterate through each current frame blob. So that's, uh, let's see, if we close this and then if we close this. So first we're going to iterate through each current frame blob which is going to be, so in other words we're going to iterate through this this and then this, the three uh, blue circles. And again, in the actual program, they're um, they're stored as contours, and then we have a bounding rec for each contour. But in the simplified slide, just to make it easier to sort of explain, I drew them as uh, circles. So um, then, in our inner for loop, we're going to, while we're on each of the current frame blobs, we're going to compare that to each of the existing blobs, and we're going to get the um, index in existing blobs of the least distance as far as the prediction of the existing blobs next step to the distance of the current frame blob. So th that doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. That's why I made this slide here. So in other words, starting from this blue circle, we're going to compute the distance to here to this prediction. Then we're going to compute the distance to this prediction. Then we're going to compute the distance to this prediction. Then we're going to take the smallest of those three, which obviously is this distance here to the one that's almost overlapping with then what we're going to do is we're going to say if, if this distance here is less than some threshold and here's the threshold that we're using we're saying if that least distance is less than the current frame blobs diagonal size which again um, in the actual program here unlike the slide we're working with um, contours and uh, bounding rectangles so uh, diagonal size means diagonal size of the bounding rectangle uh, and then we're going to say if the that diagonal size times 1.15 if our distance is less than that then we're going to say we have a match at which point we're going to add uh, the blob to the existing blob so then that would be that we would add this blue uh, current frame to our list of instances for this blob here and then we would of course perform the same thing with this uh, current frame blob and that one and we would get our correct matches there as well. And then down here what happens if a new blob enters the frame? So for example in the video we're working with today say a new person walks into the frame you know maybe a new person walks in up here or maybe a new person walks in down here and what we're going to do in that case is we're going to uh, iterate through existing blobs and um, if for any blob where we did not find a current match or a new blob, we're going to set that uh, to false, and then we're going to increment the number of consecutive frames without a match. And if number of consecutive frames without a match gets over five, then we're going to say that that blob is no longer being tracked. So uh, that's about as well as I can explain this function in a relatively short amount of time. Um, you can put step through debugging on and step through this and kind of see how the details work out. But, but this is really kind of the heart of the program here is the concept of matching your current frame blobs to your already existing blobs. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward really. Here we have a separate function to add a blob to existing blobs, uh, to add a new blob, and then calculate the distance between points. This is simply the Pythagorean theorem. And then we have these two functions here to draw and show contours, depending on if we pass in actual contours or if we pass in uh, a vector of blobs. And then we're going to draw the info on the image. So um, hopefully this was a helpful example. Uh, blob tracking can be a little tricky matching the blobs up, um, especially if you haven't done this before. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, if anybody else out there is stuck on this, um, this video will kind of get you past that. Uh, and in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially take the algorithm that we've done here, and we're going to tailor it specifically to car counting, and we're going to find that we get really good results uh, in that instance. So I'll see everybody in the next one.